All right. Here comes the fun part. So, we just got here at Wakiva Springs, Wakiva Falls. We need to check and make sure there's enough space between our power connector and our electric cord. So let's take a walk over there. So once you pull in, make sure you have distance. We have a 25 foot cable, so always tell them what kind of length you have. Um, they're pretty good here at Wakaiwa Falls as far as um, putting you where you are based off of your length of your cables. And uh, we are all hooked up, we're all good. And um, get the power going, it's the very first thing you want to do. Very, very first thing. Second thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have enough distance from your slide. You gotta do that, no obstacles. No obstacles coming out. If you park next to a tree, you wanna make sure that your slide can, of course, go outwards without any obtrusion. Now comes the fun part. We gotta level the RV. This, I hate, but this is part of RVing life, so come with me. It's always great to have a checklist. If you don't have this checklist, I'll make sure I include one of these checklists in the description down below. Uh, our teardown checklist and our setup checklist, this being the easiest part, this being the more complicated part. So we're gonna grab our level. Very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check this line right here. It's perfect, I'm just gonna put this up. I'm gonna come on in and see. Um, we are slightly off a little bit. Obviously, we want that bubble to be down. So we're going to bring this part down and level it. So we don't have that much to go. Now, because we don't have a button that we can push, like some of the fifth wheelers have, um, we physically have to do this manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the car, truck, I'm going to pull out. Okay, we're going to put some wood underneath the tires and then we're gonna, Ellen's gonna back me in and uh, you'll see how we do it. As you can tell, that's a, a bit of work, but um, this, this ground is so soft, it's gonna settle, hopefully. And if it doesn't, well, that's the beauty of parking on a campground that has soil. And unfortunately, everything in Florida is swamp ground, so um, we'll just have to make it work. All right, so now that we are in place, we're going to chalk our tires. Now, we use the rubber chalks, the real chalks. That's what they use for the airplanes. I don't recommend, ever recommend using the plastic chalks because they're plastic and they're not durable. This is solid rubber and it works well. So we're going to put one behind each tire.
And this is going to prevent the RV from rocking back and forth. Everything we make mention today in this video will be in the description box below. All right. So once we do from left to right, So we're leaning a little bit more that way. But again, the soil will even back out eventually at some point. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I will tell you, this is where four-wheel drive comes into play. Because as you can tell, in two-wheel drive, there are back tires and we kicked up a lot of dirt and made that big divot. But as soon as I put four-wheel drive in, this baby just went. So, okay. So again, we're gonna stick to the checklist because that's what seems to work well for us. And next on the checklist, after we've done our leveling, um, we're gonna disconnect the tow vehicle. So following, after chalking the tires, we're gonna disconnect the tow vehicle. get the hitch arm down we're gonna put some wood underneath it and we're gonna lower it. I'm stop I want to make sure this is right in the center opportunity for us to see if we can remove this way. Two hands, good old strength. And that's one. This time, we got smart. We put the pins in. These things. The bar comes right out. Okay, one up the chains. Drop that. Unhook the power cord. Drop that. And if you wanna come on over. The next sway bar. All right, we'll continue to raise it, and this is where we focus on trying to level now from front to back. So we did from side to side, now we're going to do the entire length of the trailer. Before I do that, I need to make sure I get this ball off the hitch.
much it is. So, I have all my toll, my tools, and my pins. got to have patience. I don't always get it right and we're working it together as a couple to develop patience on the setup and the breakdown part but you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be distracted. So take your time and do it right. All right so that's all disconnected. Come over here I want to show you this. This just so happens to work out perfect. Storing this fits right in here, going like that. Look at that. Oh. All right. Now I'm going to pull forward. Organization is key, okay? Making sure you pack your truck in an order that makes it easy to begin your next steps. We've got our wood. We're going to put that down in a second to pull down our stabilizers. I have my fresh water hoses. air pump cinder block and my black tank equipment recommend you buy a drill for this next part okay we got this drill at Harbor Freight and this attachment right here to bring the, the stabilizers up and to bring them back down so we'll grab the wood Good solid surface. Bring it down just a little bit. And we're just going to tighten it just a tad. Okay, you don't want to raise these too high because otherwise they'll go right through your floor. They're just there to prevent motion back and forth and to stabilize out your RV. That's it. All right, so, so far, so far, we've completed the distance from the water to the power. We've got power hooked up. The, side, the slides have enough room. 
we leveled left to right, we chalked our tires, we disconnected from our tow vehicle, we're leveling our trailer from front to back right now. So look at that. God is good. We are perfect. Perfect. All right, walk the steps. That's the easy part. All right, so we deployed our stabilizers. We've leveled the trailer from front to back. We've connected the electric cord. Uh, if you have a surge protector, which I highly recommend you get, we haven't gotten one. Hopefully we get one soon. We're gonna connect our water hose. Then we're gonna check for our slide obstacles before we pull out the slide. And we're also going to check uh, that we're good to go with connecting our sewer hose. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do the fresh water. couple things about these hoses. These are my favorite hoses. When we first got our RV, our first 30 days in the RV, they told us to get these hoses that, you know, the old fashioned hoses. And they're just a pain. They kink, they break, they're fragile, and they're not easy to put away. And then I went to Walmart and I picked up these. I got some of them on Amazon and they're perfect. fashion hose that I was talking about okay here's one over here this is an RV grade waterline hose they're just a pain in a butt to store these because they bend and twist and are very lightweight they break down real easy so very first thing I'm going to do is connect this v-shape to the water hose on property here and then I highly recommend, and again, we'll put this in the description down below where you can get it, that you buy a pressure regulator that um, prevents water from literally spewing out everywhere in your RV. When we first um, got into our RV and we parked it in our first spot, we found a leak. Luckily, my neighbor came over and he was able to help me locate it. And just because these RVs are built by hand, not by machine, um, the nut was kind of loose. Had we not had the pressure regulator, the water pressure would have loosened it even more and then you got a disaster waiting to happen. Is that what's in there? Yeah. So that's what this is. So I have the hose, I have the fresh water hose connected to the pressure regulator. And then this other one I'll use for like uh, if the kids are dirty or it's just uh, we want to hose down the patio, I got a separate hose for that. You want to kind of keep your, you want to try to keep your cable, hoses, everything organized and tucked underneath the RV because when maintenance people come by and they weed whack, they don't care too much about your stuff and it's we've been to places where you see they'll hit the sewer line and bust the person's sewer line without them even knowing and then you got a whole big mess so we got our hose hooked up our fresh water hose over here we're going to take this out okay and this is where we're going to connect the sewer all right so you always want to put gloves on for this part i mean i don't mind doing it without it find that absolutely gross but I wash my hands regardless um, these are called nitro gloves and they're special gloves they use them for painting 
mechanics will use them. They're just very durable gloves. If you buy the other gloves, the cheap ones that you pay like a dollar for, um, you get what you pay for. They break. The latex, I think, is what they are. Um, so it's called nitroles. I got these at Harbor Freight. Paid about seven dollars. We've had them for three months, and I still have a few more months. Now I love these. I love these. These are rhino hoses. See, they got some boo boo coming out. <laughs> what I love about these rhino hoses is they stretch, and then for storage purposes, go right back in. And they're very durable. They last. They've lasted us so far. They haven't broke. Lay it out, make sure I have enough space for all my hoses. Which we do. And this is what I'm talking about. One of these things. They take your hoses, they push them off the ground so that when the weed whackers come around, they can't touch your hose. They'll bang this before they touch the hose. Put it on. Got your black, got your gray, poo poo, your shower, your sinks, your everything that's water touching your hands or your body going into there. Okay, so that's on. I'll just feed it. Here. Here. And now we'll just raise this hose off the ground. So because our slide is here and our hose connectors are here, normally once your stabilizers are down, you can bring out your slide. But because if we do that, we'll be locking, being able to set up the hose connectors. So we went ahead and we did it first. But next, we're ready to go. What we're gonna do is open up the gray tank. Now, you can leave the gray tank open because that's going to fill up the quickest because you take showers, you wash your hands, you do your dishes. But what I like to do, and I highly recommend you do it this way, is twice a week I open up the valves. Let me explain. Why? When I go to release the black tank, you don't want to leave the black tank open because if you leave the black tank open all the time, the poo-poo is going to eventually dry into the inside of your rhino hose and it's going to cake up. It could cause a block. I know it's graphic. I get it. Um, it will also dry and it will break down your hose over time and that will crack it and you'll have to buy another hose. Here is a prime example for why we don't use hoses like this and we use the rhino hose. This one has just a little leak, but that little leak can spew out essentially your crap everywhere and cause other issues. So, um, twice our, a week. Our kind neighbor donated that to us when yes, we didn't have kind, yeah. a long enough hose. Right, because we didn't have enough hose. But twice a week I'll come out, I'll open up the black tanks, I'll let that flood, and I'll close the black tank and I'll open up the gray tank and flush the line. And that system works better for me than leaving the gray tank open all the time. Okay. We've done everything. We're ready to pull the slide out and, and then we're done and that's it. That's how you set up, um, that's how we set up our Transcend 32 foot um, Grand Design RV. So let's go do that.
right, so there you go. That's how we set it up. <coughs> hey, if you like this video, please give us that thumbs up. And uh, if you're new, please subscribe to our channel. We do try to come out with new content every single week at 6 p.m. And if we miss a video, I'll always provide you with an update as to why and what the next steps are from there. But that's how you set up the RV. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's more work tearing it down. But um, thanks for coming along for the journey and stay tuned for our next video.